If you don't have control of your ego, can you be prepared for death? No. Can never be prepared for death. What is preparation for death? I know so many people say, I'm prepared for death. They say it with the ego. I'm not afraid of death, right? There's not preparation of death. There's not. So many people, they want to die. So many people tonight, as we're speaking, they're cutting themselves, overdosing themselves, doing all sorts of things to destroy themselves. There's not preparation of death. There's preparation to come out from this world and to enter into the other world. But there's not preparation of death. Because the preparation of death is to prepare yourself to meet your Lord. These ones, they don't even believe really properly in their Lord. They are, what it means to prepare for death is to prepare yourself for the real life. To prepare yourself when you wake up. As Hazrat Ali Karamallah Wajah is saying, man is sleeping. When he dies, he wakes up. So how you prepare for death? You start waking up. That's how you prepare for death. If the real death is waking up and you are preparing yourself for death, every day you're going to wake yourself up a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. What it means to wake up a little bit more to the death, then that means that you must die from this world a little bit more. You must die from your desires a little bit more. You must die from this dunya, from shaitan a little bit more. You must die from your nafs a little bit more. You're not going to think this world is real. You're going to start thinking this world is not real. It's coming and it's going. Your desires, they're not real. It comes and it goes. Once you pull yourself away from this dunya, then you enter into that stage looking at Mawla. That is where preparation of death. Then you're going to take your life very seriously and you're going to take death very seriously. Because the Holy Prophet is saying, Alayhi Salaatu Wasalam, prepare, live in this world, work for this world as much as you are going to live in this world. Work for the Ahirat as much as you're going to live in this Ahirat. You live in this world. How long are you going to live in this world? Prophet passed at the age of 63. That is the average age of his Ummat. 63 they passed. Those who passed beyond 63 years old were believers. There is no angel recording the bad deeds anymore. Everything is good. Okay? 63 years. You're going to live a short while. Work as much as you're going to live. That's all. How long are you going to live in Ahirat? Forever. Then work. If you know you're going to stay in this, uh, let's say, hotel for three days, you know that the rent is uh, going to be, the bill is going to be, say, $1,000. You're going to bring that much money. But if you know you're going to stay in this other place and it's going to be millions, you have to work for that. So now the emphasis is what now? Emphasis is preparing. Don't prepare so much for this world. Prepare for the other world. Believers, when they prepare for the other world, this world also comes with it. What is the proof? The Prophet ﷺ, Sahabi Kiram, were they running for this world? No. They were running for Ahirat. But this world came. The doors of the empires opened for them. The riches of this world came to them. During Hazrat Osman's time, you couldn't find one single Muslim that was poor. You couldn't find it because there was so much wealth coming in. They had to give zakat to the non-Muslims, not to the Muslims. You understand? So now, when you're running after this world, like what Shavani used to say, what? You're running after this world is like a man who plants the wheat. Then when it comes time to harvest, he harvests it and he takes the straw. He doesn't take the wheat. But the one who is aiming for the Ahirat, he plants the wheat and he takes the wheat and the straw. So believers must be intelligent. Believers are the ones that, if the world comes to them in the morning time and he loses it in the night time, his heart is not going to jump. He's not going to lose himself. 
So, preparing for death, you have to prepare for your death before you die. When you're dead, you can't prepare for your death because you're already dead. <laughs> it's too late. Then that time you're going to be in complete shock. Yeah. So those who are busy with their ego, they hate death. They love life. Running away. But look around. This is Friday night. Look around. Look around here. Look around the city. You see in the streets. Don't say I'm better, but look to see what is the reality. Majority of them out now, none of them are thinking of their Lord. They are out there, especially Friday night, Saturday night, especially in America in the city, they are running wild, work hard all week long to spend their money one or two days to just destroy their health, their youth, their spirit and everything, running wild after the ego. They're teaching the young ones, run after your ego. It's okay, you're still young. Bruh, when are you going to run after Ahirat? When you're old and you cannot function, that's the time you're going to run. You're no good for nothing now. So, you're preparing for the death. Where are you going to learn? You're going to learn from your Prophet. How are you going to learn from your Prophet? You're going to learn from those who inherit from him, who inherit that ilm. Yes, they're living in this world, they eat, they drink, they laugh, but they are not disconnected from the Ahirat. They're always remembering it. They pray Fajr, they're saying possibility, I'm not going to reach Zuhur. They pray Zuhur, possibility, I'm not going to reach Asr. They pray Asr, possibility, I'm not going to reach Maghrib. They pray Maghrib, possibility, I'm not going to reach until Isha. They pray Isha and they say possibility, I'm not going to reach the Fajr time, Ya Rabbi. Every time they pray, they say, Shukur, Ya Rabbi, because you still give me a chance to ask you for forgiveness. And they prepare themselves for that death, preparing for the long trip, long journey ahead. It's a long journey. It's not going to be you die, suddenly you wake up, you're in paradise, or you're in, no, it's a long journey. You take the cab, you go to Newark. From that airport, you take a plane and you go, let's say, to where? You can go to Jeddah. In your mind, you say it only takes a few hours to get there. But in reality, it doesn't. There's traveling from here to the airport. So many things may happen. You're going to start planning. You say, we have to move at this time, not at this time. There may be traffic, there may be this, there may be that. You go to the airport, you have everything. Everything is there. Still, you have to go through what? Security, check. You have to check your bags. You have to wait. You have to enter into your plane. You have to put your bags. You have to wait. You have to listen to all the instructions given there. You have to wait. And then they take off, you have to wait. You cannot even take off your seat belt, correct? So many things. A journey is not easy. The dunya is teaching us. What about the ahirat? There's so many stations that you have to go through. But those ones who are preparing for that death now, that's a time you will find a chauffeur coming to your door, brings you to the airport, person is going to be there to greet you, to say, please, sir, we have a lounge waiting for you. Everyone else is waiting online to get in. Don't worry about it. Come and sit in this lounge. This is a nice waiting area, waiting for the plane. You bought first, first class. You understand? But those are the ones who are preparing. What are we here in this world? This world is a prison. This world, as the Prophet says, is a prison. For who? For the believers. The Prophet says this world is a paradise. For who? For the unbelievers. That is how the Prophets and 
the holy ones and the believers, they can be sitting inside a palace, but it's not inside their heart. Shri Abdul Kari Gelani Sir, he lived in a huge palace. He was treating his guests every night with one uh, roast lamb each. But his heart was not poisoned by the dunya, of course. Because before that, his sheikh says, wait for me. And he waited for his sheikh for how long? Seven years up in the mountains. He had no food. He was eating the grass and the leaves. His mouth, everything was green. Yes, you have to go through before you get something. And then this whole world was open to him. But as Hazrat Rumi is saying, what? Don't look so much into my hands. Take what is from my heart. It will come. As in the Mevlevi way, it will come. But it has to go. You don't just take it. And you don't just say, no, I don't. You have to take, but you have to give. Now, you have to move. You have to move according to the atoms, how they are moving, and you have to move according to how the galaxies that they are moving. Now, when you make that whirling, the Sema, you are in sync with all of creation. In that movement. Moving to where? Moving to your Mawla. So this world, it is a prison for the believers. If you don't find this world a prison, your belief is not complete yet. It's not. I have nice life, nice car, nice family, nice wife, nice... Uh, nice for you. <laughs> Billions of people is not so nice. You think you're a believer? Will a believer be comfortable in his house when he knows his neighbor is suffering? If a neighbor is suffering and you're comfortable, you are not a believer. You're a hypocrite. To give shukur is something else. To give shukur and to be happy that Allah has given is something else. But to be happy with this world is something else. You understand? Are we happy in this world? You understand? That is how you're going to keep the balance too. This world is a prison for the believers. Because this world is still separating us from our original home. This is not our home. If you still feel comfortable here, then you haven't discovered your real home yet. Once you discover what your real home is, no matter where you go, how wonderful, how amazing it is, you still want to go home. The best trip, they say, the best journey is the journey home. Well, how are you going to feel? If somebody tells you, live in that palace, but after some time, we're going to send you to prison forever. How do you think you're going to feel? You're going to be a bit cuckoo, you know? Because you know your end is no good. No matter how long and how wonderful, how great your life is, your world is, your life is no good because you, this is all going to end and you're going to go to prison. This is how the world is for those who are not believing. Those who are believing this world is a prison. They will tell you, we put you in prison. After some time pass, you're going to be in a palace forever. What do you think is going to happen to that one in the prison? Even if it's the worst prison, he's going to have what? Hope. It's not just a hope, hope. It is a reality that this is going to end. So don't get upset too much this and that is going to happen because it's all going to end the believer must think that way the believer should look with uh, clear eyes with hopeful eyes to that world that this is world yalan dunya as when the holy prophet was going on the miraj he was riding on the burak and he heard a voice saying, Ya Muhammad, stop giving salams to him. 
Imagine now, giving salams to him, and he didn't give salams back. And he turned to Hazrat Jibreel salam, and he's saying, who is that? It was an old woman, sick and old and weak, and wearing a lot of makeup and nice uh, expensive clothes and jewelry, just like the women on Fifth Avenue. <laughs> yeah. Calling out to him, and he didn't even stop, he didn't even look. And the Prophet ﷺ then asked, Jibreel salam, who is that? Jibreel salam said, it is known to you, Ya Rasulullah. If you had answered just once to her, your whole nation would have fallen into the dunya sunk into the dunya, because that was dunya. Oh, oh, if it's us, we just, anyone who says, this is when your heart has to open, when you observe that you know, why is the shaykh behaving like this in this situation? Why is the shaykh behaving like this to this nice guy? Why is he being so, uh, <laughs> to this guy? This guy looks harmless. This guy is an old guy, why is he screaming? This guy looks nasty, but he's so nice to this one. Why is it? And you start asking, you start, you start observing. Then, oh, you figure out. Because things that you figure out by yourself, you will never forget. You'll never forget because you open it, you discover it, you understand? But things that always people tell you, even if it's, people tell you, it's not going to stick so much until you experience it. Which is why the Prophet ﷺ said what? The best knowledge is the knowledge that you experience. So you want to experience a sohbah, travel with a shaykh, you can experience certain things. That's important. Because you're not just going to be murids, you have to make progress. But we don't force people. We don't say to them, this is... So... We are saying, Shukur Ya Rabbi, we are happy with our Lord. We are not happy with ourselves, we are not happy with this world, we are not happy with the direction of this world, with the direction of this Ummah. We are not happy, but we are saying, Ya Rabbi, Shukur, what you have given us, don't test us. Our hands are tied, there's only so much that we can do. But what we can do is to change ourselves. Maybe we cannot change uh, the government as people, subhanAllah, Americans are realizing. Huh? Can't change it. It's a system. You can't change it. They put that system, oh, oh, 300 years ago. They place it. You think they're just going to change it just because a bunch of people say change? You, know, you just realize <laughs> that after 300 years, you just woke up to say it's not going to change. Don't you know? The families that are ruling today were the families that ruled 1,000 years ago. It hasn't changed. So Americans now, they're waking up. But Muslims are sleeping. Americans are waking up to say this system is rigged. This whole system is a fraud. But Muslims are sleeping. Because they're not using Islam. They're not using Tasawuf to make them to think and to understand and to look at this world that the Prophet ﷺ is teaching the Sahabi Kiram how to look to this world, how to look at those people who are ruling. You have to look, you have to know what you need to bring down and what you need to make to rise up again. So, <laughs> Ya Allah, give us the strength to change ourselves for the better to make us to step on our ego, to make us to become sincere, to make us to run after sincere people, to make us not to get fooled by ourselves and fooled by other people. And may Allah forgive us and accept our weak service. For the sake of the Holy Prophet, for the sake of Sahih Al-Fatiha. Amen.